Shalom and good day all, this is Tehillim29, back again for another DC comic review. And in this DC comic review, I am reviewing issue 89 of Tom the One Trick Pony Taylor's Nightwing. And of course with this issue, we have Superboy in it. And starting off with first things first, the rating for the covers and how they connect to the stories. So, for the first cover, I give it a 7.5 out of 10, as yes, it does connect to what's happening in the story, because they do meet up. And also a 7.5, uh, I chose not to get the other variant cover, because I thought the variant cover for, um, or the second variant cover, uh, made John look a little bit too Asian. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last thing you want for something like this. Uh, especially when John isn't Asian at all. Maybe the new Superman, yeah? But not John Samuel Kent. So now it's time to move into the in internal art, as well as covering some of the things in relation to the story. And I'll use the variant cover to show the art around the beginning, middle, and of course the end. So, first things first, with some of the art around the beginning of the story. Uh, as you can see, Tom Taylor has decided to do a Bendis con, or a Bendis retcon. And um, retcon something that never really existed in the DC Rebirth universe. But let's, let's take a look here. Um, isn't it funny that this Nightwing is wearing the New 52 costume? So this must be a New 52 John Kent. Just putting it out. <laughs> of course, moving into a little bit further around the beginning. And of course we have this... Um, New 52 John Samuel Kent, or John Kent, uh, talking to his old man at Fortress of Solitude. And last but not least, at least we move into Bloodhaven. Now as we jump towards the middle of the story, we of course have um, that pink kryptonite working on John Samuel Kent once again. Manipulating him. And of course. We get told that the truth is run by. Lex Luthor. Well at this rate. Yes. I believe quite possibly it is. And uh. He's working for Lex Luthor as well. Even though he tries to play it jokingly. Yeah, sorry. And last but not least, towards the end of the story. As for the internal art, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I'll now jump towards um, how I rate the story. And let's start off with first things first. Did we get any comic references? Yes, we did. We got a comic reference to a... Or actually, to two. And one was Nightwing 83 and Son of kal issue 7. And they were to indicate... Um, what Superman had asked of Nightwing to do. And also, in issue 7 of Son of kal uh, in regards to this fraudulent truth movement that um, Tom Taylor has in his story. His lazy storytelling in regards to this, in the area of time, uh, this is how he set it out. And I admit, must admit, it is super fucking lazy. Because he's a super terrible writer. 
Um, and I don't like it when writers or storytellers do this in stories. They could at least be a little bit more creative as to what uh, Mariko Tamaki has been doing. I'll, I'll lift that up as a real good example of what she has been doing in the in regards to the Arkham Tower story. Now, this is how he put it out. He had it as then, now, now, and later. Really lazy, really stupid. Um, he's got the creativity of a piece of crap. <laughs> like, give us a little bit more detail here. When is then? Uh, you could have made out then as uh, 10 years ago. Um, that would have made a little bit more sense. Now, of course, moving into the present um, or present day. And you could, e could even be freaking smart and sort of like put in the time of day like Mariko Tamaki has been doing on the Arkham Tower story. Uh, same in relation to the later. You, you could point out that it's uh, a little bit further throughout the day, such as when are these now events taking place in the later event? Is it happening at 10 a.m., 11 a.m.? Is it happening in the afternoon? When the hell is it happening? Moving into the next thing. Now, this is something he did add a lot of, and that is locations. Uh, of course, we had the Fortress of Solitude. We had Bloodhaven. We had the floating shit, oops, um, I mean the floating HQ of truth. Um, uh, we also had Le LexCorp, and last but not least, Metropolis. The cast of characters consisting of Nightwing, Batman, um, Superboy, Superman, Kellex, Oracle, Risk, um, of course, our favourite villain, Jay Nakamura, and last but not least, Arrow and Wink, or Eerie and Wink. This overall story gets a 6 out of 10 from me. Um, if he really wanted to be creative, I think he went the wrong thing about this he should have made the introduction between these two a fresh start not something retconned like uh the terrible retcons that brian michael bendis has done he's got the creativity of a dead snail and this is why this story deserves a six out of ten well until then let's keep it colorful and have yourself an awesome day